Efter tragedien på Utøya og i regjeringskvartalet i Oslo, så har det vært en mediedekning uten like. Reportere fra hele verden har kommet hit for å fortelle om det som har skjedd. Jeg har fått med meg en representant for det internasjonale pressekorpset. Han heter Clark Boyd, og han kommer fra et radioprogram som heter The World, som er et samarbeid mellom BBC og US Public Radio. Clark Boyd, I'm glad you could speak with us today. Happy to. Um, I'm wondering why is it that there is such an immense media interest in what has happened in Oslo? I think first and foremost it's, it's, it's a horrific human tragedy and, and we're, we're drawn to stories like that. Um, second of all, I think you know there was a lot of, uh, a, a lot of talk at first about is, was this perpetrated by Muslim extremists and I think with the sensitivities to that across the globe with a lot of the attacks that we've seen in the past years there's obviously interest in that. Um, and, and then when it was revealed that it was one of Norway's own, as, as people have told me here, um, I, I think that in some ways that made the story even more interesting and looking for even more insight into why this could happen in Norway and, and what's going to be the Norwegian reaction to it. But do you feel a sense of identification with what the Norwegian people is going through at this point? I definitely think there is a sense of identification and, and it, it's funny that you mention that because a number of people that I've talked to here say, I, I feel sort of a sense on the streets here in Oslo of, of the way that things did feel in New York City after 9-11, that there is this feeling of, of coming together and a time when people can, can mourn together and, and take stock of, of where things are and, and where to go from here. So definitely a, a sense of identification uh, between those two events. Um. Have, having gone through uh, several types of terror attacks in the United States, um, could you tell us about the way you perceive um, the Norwegian mentality in terms of how the Norwegian public and the Norwegian politicians have dealt with this as compared to the scenario in the States? It's, it's been 180 degrees different, I think, in many ways. Um, uh, what I've noticed is, is sort of the, the calm and introspective way uh, that the Norwegian government and the Norwegian people have gone about dealing with this situation. The focus has very much been on how can we comfort those uh, who have lost loved ones? Uh, how can we take stock of this situation? And I've been uh, impressed by th the words uh, from the Prime Minister saying we are not going to let this change, fundamentally change Norwegian society. Um, and those are not necessarily the kinds of things that we heard in the United States after 9-11. I think that after 9-11 uh, in the United States, there was uh, a lot of flag waving. There was a lot of let's go get them kind of thing. Um, and I haven't seen that here, and I haven't heard it here. And I uh, remain amazed, at, at, like I said, at the calm way that people have, have gone about uh, uh, taking care of those who have lost loved ones, uh, mourning for those uh, that they've lost. Uh, it's, it's been. Uh, the only word I can come up with is touching. It's been incredibly touching. Would you like to give a message to the Norwegian people and to everybody at the Mela Festival, the thousands of people from all over the world who've come together today to pay their respects to um, the victims of uh, the 22nd of July? Well, I've been in Norway a couple of times now, and the one thing that's, that, that I always come away with from, from Norway is this sense of warmth, of openness, of friendliness. You people are incredibly approachable here, um, and I would hate to see that lost. And I know that the weeks and months ahead are going to, there's going to be a lot of debate back and forth, definitely new security needs in the country. I don't think you're going to be able to see your politicians walking down the street anymore without bodyguards, things like that. But at the same time, um, I, I hope that you don't lose that warmth and openness. So I, I would urge people to, if you're going to err on the side of anything, err on the side of that warmth and openness, because I think that that's what makes Norway really special. Thank you. You're welcome.